Sham Wow, John Lovell. Wow. All right. Now, welcome back. This week's episode brought to you by Gummy Worms. Sour Patch Gummy Worms. Rotten Teeth. Oh, yeah. By Pepsi. <laughs> wait a minute. We're in the South. Coca Cola. A pop. Oh, wait. No, that's a Northern thing. <laughs> <laughs> what you guys don't realize is that's the video intro. Okay. Surge! Lowering your sperm count. <laughs> <laughs> Since 1993. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, hey folks, we're doing a video on inexpensive ARs that are going to last and are going to be tough enough to get the job done. Uh, with me is Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, one of these guys is Chad and Eric. Uh, do you guys know Chad, Eric? And uh, they have done a whole bunch of cool stuff on their YouTube channel. If you're not already following them, I'll have a link below in the description. Make sure you check them out. They got a whole bunch of stuff uh, uh, offered to you guys. Anyway, they're doing all kinds of meltdowns of ARs where they're testing these uh, different weapon systems. And uh, yeah, they are here today to give you guys some good information in case you're saying, hey, what's the most inexpensive way to get into an AR that'll still last? Now, some of you guys, internet commanders out there, or, or that was a little harsh, I didn't mean it like that, but some of you guys yes. have really shopped and found the way to build the world's greatest AR for $55, and you're really proud You'll let everyone know in the description and be like, what? These guys are morons. And I figured out how to, and good job, pin the rose on your chest. Way to go, buddy. No, I'm excited that you found a good deal, but uh, we won't be the world's best here. We're just going to go for good. So uh, here we go. Guys, uh, what are you going to put in front of me? Hmm. Well, where to begin? Yeah, you know, the, the thing is, it, that's a great point. You're talking like build or buy. I know that there, there's always the build aspect that people want to go the build route. Some people want to go the buy route. I think what we're going to really focus on for this particular video is more of the, hey, I want to just buy an entry-level gun right out the gate. Now, we do our series called The Meltdown that uh, John alluded to. Basically, we'll take various uppers uh, off of different guns, and we'll run them on machine gun lower, and we'll really cook them and see what kind of damage they can take, how hot they can get, and really heat is what kills a firearm. That rapid growth of heat within the weapon system and everything, and that heat will just cause issues. You'll melt gas tubes, you'll, your gas port will begin to erode, the barrel will begin to erode, and that heat really uh, speeds that process up quite a bit. And what we found in our testing is a lot of these lesser expensive options that are out there are actually quite good, and the average shooter is not going to really be able to get any of these lesser expensive ARs hot enough to really hurt them in average shooting. So that's one thing that our consistent testing has found is something like this MMP-15. Now, this is an MMP-15 Sport 2. Now, obviously, this one's been melted. You know, we, we cooked this What one. does this retail for? Um, like 600 bucks. The okay. complete rifle. Right. That's Less than 600 That's a whole gun. That's amazing. All right, go ahead. Yeah, so, like, you're talking uh, oftentimes, depending if you catch them on sale, sub-600 hour gun. And, um, you know, it's a good, solid setup. Now, granted, this one's been melted, of course, but this is a good option for somebody that wants a great gun right out the gate that's ready to go. You may not have all the bells and whistles, but it is a good workhorse gun that will hold up quite well. I would say if I was going to buy a cheap AR, a cheaper AR, or let's just say entry-level AR, really hard to beat an MMP. And we're not advocating the sale of firearms, which is up the devil. Uh, so if YouTube, you're watching, we're good. So Yeah, the thing too with these <laughs> right. guns... Is that a good cover your butt? Yeah, yeah. Someone's going to like, don't so. do not so guns. Like, I'm trying to not get canceled here. <laughs> The thing with these rifles is that a lot of people get on this whole barrel kick, you know, like, oh, you got to have a cold hammer forged barrel, otherwise you're nothing. Well, these M&P barrels... Is that how they talk? Yeah, that, you kind of nailed the accent. Oh, yeah. that's, that's you got to have a cold hammer forged barrel, otherwise you're nothing. Yeah. So, but these barrels are actually, um, the Smith barrels at least are melanided inside and out. It's very, very hard, like, carbide-like finish almost, I mean, comparable to it. Gives it a very good hard surface finish on the outside and the inside of the bore. And like Eric said, heat does destroy these guns. You're going to get throat erosion and muzzle erosion as the barrel heats up and the metal just can't handle it and it just starts to erode. I mean, we've shot the rifling out of guns like this. But the thing is, like, the gas tube on the M&P didn't melt. I mean, nothing really against the palmetto, but the gas tube kind of 
went a little droopy there. I mean, it's just the quality of the metals, you know, a few minor upgrades to a cheap gun like this, a good solid red dot on there, a good zero, an ink and L gas tube, you will never shoot that thing out. I mean, you're talking, no. it'll last 10,000 plus rounds. Now, a cold hammer forged barrel, yeah, you can get 20, 30,000 rounds, if not more than that, out of it before it really starts to degrade the accuracy so much where it won't work out to like 250 or 300 yards. But you're talking guns that are well over the $1,000 price point most of the time. Yeah. But for a cheap gun, I mean, this thing, the M&P, is the one that's impressed me the most so far. I mean, the meltdowns are just what they are. I mean, we just burned the gun down. It's fun, and it's just cool to see how they, how they, you know, just kill themselves. Sure. But it's just such a good gun for the money. They are. That's good. Such what is the money for this Palmetto? This the, pal is, the Palmetto uh, uppers are less than... the M&P 15? The yeah. M yeah, the M&P 15, the, to the, the complete gun, I think when we got this from, I think we got it from Moss, it was like 550 or something like that. It was oh, not that's expensive. That's pretty reasonable. The Palmetto upper was like three fifty. The, 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 the thing about the Palmettos, and one thing I want to mention, so it'd be about five hundred something. For yeah, yeah, they're the, about the same price. The Palmettos are generally more um, geared towards somebody who wants to build, mm -hmm. but a lot of gotcha. folks do run the Palmettos because they'll buy the upper and lower kit, add themselves a receiver, put the gun together, and they've got a very very reasonably priced AR for sometimes south of four hundred bucks mm -hmm. if you catch them on sale. You can build an AR for less than four bills. Yep. Um, and the thing is, too, their premium series, they hold up quite well. They actually use, um, like, FN barrels. Yeah, they're they're basically surplus, like, not used, just surplus FNH, coal hammer forged barrels, and hence the increase in price. But we did do a meltdown on one of those uppers a little while back. Didn't we? That one had an ink nail gas tube, is that mm -hmm. right? And that sucker lasted, still had real strong rifling, but the gas tube failed before the barrel went. It did. It's what you want. But so, so usually I'm coming from a place and those who follow the channel already know of like, yeah, John's kind of a gun snob of like, I get the nice stuff and that's all I really use. And so like, you know, I've been, yeah, Daniel Defense or something like that, something I really like. And, and But then there's all kinds of folks that are wanting to build and tinker and there's ways to get really good guns without going up to the top level uh, rifles at them. So I love that you guys have done this testing, this data, because I don't have it. And I want to provide that service to them. So thank you for what you, the service you're providing for all these guys out here. Now I've had, a, I have like five Palmetto lowers because I just want them, but I only have one actually complete Palmetto. It's not one of their premium builds. And uh, though I, I'm like, all right, this gun's probably great. It'll get the job done. It'll last and last. It won't fall to ashes. There was a weird recoil impulse that threw my timing off that I despised. None of my other rifles are like that. So I, I didn't like it. Uh, and not that it wasn't a bad gun. It was the timing was off. The recoil impulse was off. I don't like it. So um, uh, anyway, I just shot it. And now it just lives somewhere, you know. <laughs> a lot of that, I mean, a lot of that has to do just with gas port size. Sure carrier weight and everything, spring yep. tension, spring. spring weight, buffer weight, all that stuff is usually pretty cheap. In right, and the, the, barrel, the big thing sure. is, is I don't, I'm not a mechanic, I'm a driver. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you figure it out and give it to me. I don't like tinkering. I don't want to build. I don't want to work. I, I my gun, I want to you drive want to a gun around structures. I want to shoot it well. I want it to be an extension of me. I want to be really good with a rifle, but I don't care about building. I don't have time to build. I don't, it's not interesting to me. But I found something in the process that Palmetto State people, pro Palmetto, they're like die hard all about Palmetto. So as soon as I didn't bow down to the altar of Palmetto State as the end all be all, man, I got some hate. And so <laughs> Palmetto guys, you guys shoot PSA. It's okay. I didn't get the premium barrel and I'm an idiot. And, you know, your rifle is the best in the world. So. There's the shout out for you. <laughs> That's fine. But Palmetto, it's a good gun, isn't it? They are. And you know what? There's something to be said. A comment you made just a, a few minutes ago here that I, I want to mention real quickly here. I want to hit on the fact. Some people, you know, like the whole Daniel Defense route, like buying a gun that's kind of ready to go. You can go two different ends of the spectrum. You can either go with something entry level that has a relatively low cost of entry and then upgrade it as you see fit. Some folks, like John, it's okay for them to go, hey, I want a gun that's already got the rail system I want, it's already got the grip I want, it's already got the type of bolt carrier, the barrel length. You can basically just tailor the gun specs to what you want and have an out-of-the-box, ready-to-go option that has all the features you want. It's okay to not be a tinkerer, and it's okay to not want to mess around with these things and upgrade them. If you don't want to upgrade, it's okay to buy a nicer gun, but just bear in mind that those price point differences between, like, DD 
or some of the upper end LMT or whatever nice. else down to the entry level MMPs of the PSA. That price difference is a real price difference that has a reason to be there. It's not just more expensive because oh, it's just it a can, name. Because it can be. It's more expensive because, you know, yeah, the 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 Daniel Defense is gonna have a rail system, it's gonna have a nice bulk carrier group, it's gonna have, you know, all Magpul hardware and everything ready to go. You pull it out of the box, drop optic on it, and off you go. So I just want to make that distinction. Some people may not realize that those price differences are there for a reason, you know. That's cool. Thank you. I won't judge the tinkers and the builders, yeah. and you guys don't judge me all back. Right. Let's just... <laughs> That's me. Look, I mean, like, look, no, we're all buddies. I, we're going to look well. I do not own an AR-15. That was off the shelf. Every single AR that I own, I built. This is the only, like, like actual off-the-shelf AR off the shelf. that we have in here. Is uh, This is a Savage MSR. And, you know, Savage is probably a little bit late getting to the game because, you know, once the AR thing really just the bottom broke out and everybody that had a manufacturing company wanted to make an AR and put their name on it, right? And charged yep. $3,000 for saying, exactly. developed Ruger. by X special forces. <laughs> you know, Ruger, Five years Savage, of R <laughs> whoever, right? So on an AR? Savage is no different. You know, they, they have their version of the AR. But you notice, you know, it's got a collapsible stock. It's got a, you know, very ergonomic uh, grip that is their own little take. You know, it's a Blackhawk furniture set. But it's got an M-Lock rail ready to go. It's got flip-up sights. So this is an option for somebody that may not want to go, like, super high-end on the expense route. But maybe maybe they just want something that's not super expensive but still not quite entry-level. Hey, either. John, does that fit your hand well? Shut up, man. Shut up. We did a gun gripe video <laughs> on <laughs> fitting my head well. Uh, very cool. I want to say a gun like that is probably, uh, you're getting more than about a thousand bucks territory there. You know, but you've also got a rail. Now it's not Daniel Defense. <clears throat> you know, Daniel Defense makes some great stuff. And what's this girl run? About a grand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give or take. Cool. I will say that one of, um, one of my go-to rifles, actually, like the main go-to rifle that I have in the safe is actually based off of one of the CMMGs. This is uh, one of the Mark IV LE kits, and this is basically just a standard CAR-15, more or less. There's really nothing special about it, but I took the gas block, cut it down, put a BCM rail on it, and then I put a, like a Springco red spring in there with H2 buffer. The thing runs beautifully. Yeah. I've got a three and a half hour ACOG on it, and I've made shots out to 600 with it, which is the extent of that particular optic. Very similar to this one that we still have not finished the videos on yet, so guys, don't don't crucify us but we still have not finished the basic AR series yet. Rail with so this this is a mark 4 le this has a few yeah. upgrades man. just just a rail system trigger optic obviously this but is one that we've been actually testing the accuracy improvements on with a few component changes Groovy. over the past couple of years yeah. gotta change that furniture bro yeah well it's still got the basic CMMG. basic furniture. I've got a CMMG rifle just out of the box they, they, AR pistol. The thing is awesome. It's ran really, really well, and that's a more inexpensive option that's mm -hmm. really good and got good warranties on all the products, American made. And yeah, anyway, it gets the job done. So that that's become my wife's home defense rifle because mm -hmm. it's a shorty, and it just we like it. So uh, sniper grade, it's pretty cool. So good job, CMMG. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, one thing on anyway. the other end of the spectrum that I want to mention is um, a buddy of mine actually owns one of the Knights Armament uh, SR15s, and I'm not really too much of a snob when it comes to like you know, higher end guns and all that. I don't own any higher end guns really like that are right off the back of it. <laughs> That's I know. his PS face. But I'm <laughs> saying like, like yeah, but... I don't own like an LMT. I don't own a LaRue or a, what's the other company like Lauer or who is it? Uh, gosh, I can't even think of all the AR manufacturers that are kind of top in now. Les like Bear. Barrett. Yeah, what, uh, whatever. Any of those guys. But that SR-15, I will say that it is one of the smoothest ARs that I've ever shot in my life. And the way the gas system and everything uh, it threads onto the barrel. It has a castle nut system that locks it in place. There's no way that thing's going anywhere. Just smooth as butter. Recoil impulse is perfect. Super accurate. Cold hammer force barrels, the whole nine yards. But they're pricey. I mean, night stuff is pricey. But oh, yeah. if you want an end all, do all AR, you know, it, it's. But it, it's hard to compare something like that, which is like a two thousand dollar AR plus to a six hundred dollar rifle. Yeah. You know, but there, there's really different ends of the spectrum. For the people watching this video, I would say that the best wheelhouse to steer you towards, really the, the M&P-15s for the money are rarely, Very really hard, hard to beat. Okay. They hold up great. They're not expensive. They offer themselves to any type of modifications you might want, or not. If you just want to shoot it standard, you can throw an optic on it. Mm -hmm. 
and it's pretty hard to beat. Very hard to beat. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Well, hey, I'll provide links below in the description. Make sure you check that out for some relevant links. And uh, that was a little redundant. Anyway, Iraqi veteran, 8888. So I uh, really appreciate your time and your knowledge with all this stuff. And uh, yeah, I benefited from it. I know these guys did too. So thanks a lot, guys. Anything thanks for having us, John. Cool. Train hard, train smart, and uh, we'll see you next time. Later. Have a good one, guys. Hey, can I get a link to your hair care products? <laughs> I, I don't use hair care products. Mm -hmm. He just wakes up and his hair's like that. <laughs> no, I mean, I said poo. <laughs> I said poo.